On the top here is the uh, hot shoe, uh, through which, of course, you can connect a full range of Nikon Speedlight cameras, including the new SB900. Um, and the Nikon Speedlight gives you all kinds of advanced features, including things like wireless operation. Of course, the, uh, the D700, unlike the D3, has a built-in flash, which, of course, can be used as a fill-in, or it can be used to trigger uh, the wireless Speedlights that you may, have, may be using. Underneath there is a flash mode button which lets you control things like slow sync, flash, rear curtain, flash, red eye reduction, and of course, um, flash exposure compensation. Over here behind these covers are the uh, PC flash sync socket, and underneath that there's a uh, remote release socket. Um, the covers for these are attached to the camera so you won't lose them, although uh, you may find they get in the way, flap around a bit in the way, possibly. Underneath that is the lens release, and at the bottom here is the, uh, the selector for manual focusing, single uh, or continuous order focusing. Okay. And finally on this side here you've got the, uh, the front input dial, as I mentioned before, the depth of field preview, and this function button, which can be assigned uh, a variety of functions, including a raw button. So, for example, you can uh, shoot in JPEG, and then press this button to go into a RAW mode uh, for a single picture if you see one that you want to shoot in RAW. And it can also have a variety of other functions assigned to it as well, such as bracketing. In the grip there's the, uh, the compact flash. Unlike the, the D3 and D300, there's no catch or lever or button you have to press. You just slide it forward, and then you press this button here to release the compact flash card. And there's only one slot for compact flash, unlike the D3, which has two. And on the other side, you've got your various ports. There's an HDMI port for connection to uh, um, HDTVs, um, AV output, USB, and a DC uh, socket for um, power. Obviously, there's a tripod mount on the bottom, uh, centered on the lens axis, and the battery goes in the, uh, the hand grip. And it's worth noting that this battery is a uh, longer life battery, which can shoot, according to Nikon, up to 1,000 frames on a single charge or if you use the optional battery pack which screws in the bottom, uh, that lets you shoot up to 2,900 frames. There are far more features in the D700 than we have time to go into in this video, but some of the highlights include the 51 point uh, autofocusing system, 15 of which are crosshair type sensors in the center. And the focusing is very impressive on this camera in general. I mean, for example, it can uh, recognize color and track subjects based on their color. camera can shoot at five frames per second uh, normally. If you use the, uh, the battery grip, the optional battery grip, that lets you shoot at eight frames a second. There's electronic virtual horizon taken from the D3 also, which is like a built-in spirit level, like you have um, on an aeroplane for, for leveling the horizon, which is a very useful feature for landscape and architectural photography, for example. Um, if you use an existing Nikon digital SLR other than the D3, then you'll be using DX format lenses, which have a smaller image circle than the FX format lenses because DX sensors are smaller, which means you'll get vignetting on a full frame sensor than FX camera. Like the D3, though, you can use uh, DX format lenses, albeit with a cropped picture in the middle. It's not quite as good an experience as the D3, though, where, in fact, the uh, areas of the frame that you're not going to be getting when you use a DX lens are masked off, so you can see very clearly the crop that you get with the DX lens. Considering the camera is based internally on the D3, which, uh, which we felt gave us some of the best, best quality digital images we'd ever seen, it's no surprise that the D700 delivers much the same quality. The pictures are absolutely superb, particularly at high ISOs, where, I mean, at low ISOs in a sunny day, most cameras will give you a fairly good result, but uh, you really start to see the difference in poor lighting and when you start to have to lift the ISO a bit higher that the, uh, the D700 really shows the quality that's, that it's capable of. The sharpness, obviously subject to the lens you're using, that the, the sharpness of the pictures is superb. The colour, bearing in mind you can customise the colour to whatever kind of look that you like, um, but basically there's, there's, there's a plenty of options there too. Um, fringing, chromatic operation are all, all very well controlled with the camera and the, it, the quality is very equally good whether you're shooting JPEG or RAW, or because obviously RAW gives you a lot more options afterwards. So what you want to know is, is the D700 a good camera? 
Uh, the answer is no, it's not a good camera, it's a great camera. It's a fantastic camera, in fact. Probably the best digital SLR in the world, in my view. Whilst not quite as good as the D3 in some respects, it's better in others. For example, it has uh, dust reduction built in, it has a flash, it's smaller and lighter, so it's perhaps less of a pain to carry around for a long period of time than the D3 might be. And let's not forget that it's about a £1,000 cheaper as well. So here we have a camera for under £2,000, which offers the picture quality and most of the features of the D3 in a body which is much the same size as the D300. So what's not to like about that? We give it a score of 96%.